Welcome back. In this presentation, we're going to look at one specific model, the client server model, and see how it works in, when you access web pages using the HTTP protocol. Hypertext Transfer Protocol is the protocol that manages the World Wide Web. Using in that protocol, resources on the web, whether they be images or web pages or files, are accessed by means of their uniform resource identifiers or their URIs. For example, here's the here's a URI for Wikipedia's English language site. Resources are accessed by means of browsers. So to access resources on the web, you need to use Chrome or Firefox or Safari and so forth. The resources themselves are stored or hosted on computers designed with software to manage those resources. These are called web servers. They are the ones that respond to the HTTP requests that you make. In the client server model, a client computer or client software requests services from a server located on the internet. For example, a client makes a request to a server over the internet, the server responds to the request. So for example, suppose you're running Gmail in your Firefox browser on your computer. When you re request that it refresh your email list, a request goes out from your browser to Google's Gmail server, and it responds by sending you an updated list of your emails. So let's look at how that transaction takes place. Let's suppose you're visiting a web page in your browser and there's a link on it, www.host.edu slash page.html. Now, your browser is viewing a document that is coded in the hypertext markup language, which is the language used to code web pages. So when you click on that link, your browser knows to send a request over the internet for that page that you've requested to a web server at host.edu at this location, www.host.edu. That URI corresponds to an IP address. We'll get into the details of that in, in a future presentation. But the IP protocol knows how to route that request to a particular server at host.edu. And that server is constantly listening on port 80 for incoming requests, for incoming HTTP requests. When it gets the request, it needs to access the page that you requested, page.html. So it goes to its disk drive, retrieves the page.html with all of its included resources. In this case, there's a picture, smiley.png. And it then sends it back, encoded as an HTML document, of course, to the browser that requested it. The browser then renders the page and it appears the way you'd expect it to. So those are the seven parts of the transaction seen from a high level. We'll look in some detail later on in a future presentation at what's going on behind the scenes here. But I'd like to break here and have you try to apply this model to the transactions that take place when you're using App Inventor and you request to open a specific project, say your paint pot project. So let's pause here and give that a try.